Hi, P Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here with a really quick video that sort of uh, ties up some of the ideas from topic 9.8, uh, but so also at the same time uh, brings up to the forefront a situation that we may have to be continuing to deal with as we move further into applying polar and calculus. And what this is all about is what do you do about polar graphs that intersect? In other words, how do we find where two polar graphs cross each other? So it's not so much an example out of my notes as it, as it is an activity. And I would always ask my students to try to locate the points of intersection on the polar graph r equal 1 minus 2 cosine of theta and r equal 1 by solving algebraically. And I, if you're watching this video, it's likely you've been through a trigonometry class and you probably have the tools to solve this. And I certainly encourage you to pause the video and try to solve those algebraically, see what you get, and then resume, and then uh, we'll pick up from there. All right, so let's see what we've got here. If both of these polar equations are equal to a radius r, then it certainly seems logical that we could set the two equal to one another. And we're going to do just that. And in this situation, we see that those ones will indeed cancel away. And we could divide by the negative two. And then we really just find ourselves solving when does the cosine of theta equal zero. And if you need a little refresher with that, just really quickly, graph of cosine looks something like this. Those two points are pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So that seems to be the points of intersection. Now, if you wanted to find true ordered pairs, well, the fact that r is equal to 1 is a pretty darn giveaway, <laughs> could give away that you're going to use one for the r coordinate and those thetas would of course be your theta coordinate and keep in mind even if you had plugged pi over two or three I, pi over two in for that theta in the other equation your r would still indeed be one but really are these the points of intersection and that's where part two comes into play use your graphing calculator to sketch both graphs and what do you notice there about the points of intersection? So take your graphing calculator. Go ahead and sketch this along with me. Let's see what we've got. All right. So uh, as you have been seeing through several of my videos, I have been using, of course, the TI Inspire. But I also use a file that I have uh, created that allows me to graph a little polar coordinate curve in both polar settings and sort of a rectangular setting. You don't need this particular template, this particular document uh, to sketch this and follow through with this activity. You can just sketch this um, in your normal graphing window and it would still work. So remember you do have to choose the fact that you are graphing something in polar and we know that our first equation was 1 minus 2 times the cosine of theta. And I sketch him and I see that nice little inner loop limosone that I probably expected there uh, off to the left side of the pole. And then I'm going to go in and sketch another polar curve. This one's a little bit easier to enter because the equation was just r equal to 1. This should graph in red. There he is. I'll drag him out of the way. And what do we notice? we notice that there are three points of intersection, not the two that we originally thought. So what's going on with this? Well, let me go ahead and capture this image and put this back into our notes page and we can maybe discuss what's happening here. So we find ourselves back here in the document with our curve sketch. And what I'd like to notice here is the fact that the two points that I'm going to indicate with these blue ordered pairs maybe i should make those a slightly different color maybe purple i believe that these ordered pairs are synonymous with what we found earlier it just seems very clear 
that the theta values could be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And of course, the radius is 1. But what we did not bargain for is this extra little point of intersection. And the reason why this comes about doesn't always come about, but this equation r equal 1 has sort of a um, Clark Kent Superman kind of thing going on. He's got like the secret identity. And it's important that we realize that the equation r equal negative 1 does indeed produce the exact same curve. If you were to type r equal negative 1 into your calculator, you would notice it is the same equation. I won't do that for you. I would leave that for an exercise for you to experiment with. And based on that approach, then if we were to have taken that equation for the limasone, the inner loop limasone, and set that equal to the other version of this circle, then we're solving, yes, a different equation altogether mind you and when we divide by negative 2 we get to this point and now we realize oh well theta is actually equal to well at 1 you can see from the picture up above 0 or even 2 pi which is really the same thing for for this type of a graph 0 and 2 pi are are, are the same and so what we've got going on here now is a situation where we can link these two guys together in an ordered pair negative 1 comma 0 and that is exactly what that point is right there we have a situation where the theta value being 0 normally would kind of take us along this trajectory but the radius of negative 1 says nope we're going to bounce you over to the other side and hence that's the ordered pair so you have to be a very mindful of the fact when you're given these radius values, radius equal 5, radius equal 2, uh, a, a circle graph with an origin, with a, I'm sorry, a center here at the pole, uh, that the negative value of that R is also a standard way to present it and thus can give you some different points of intersection. Anyway, I hope this helps you, and we will see you next time.